I told myself that I wasn't going to make another video about using Instax film in Kodak cameras, simply because this isn't a photography channel. However, the response to my original video was actually pretty amazing, and I saw at least a couple comments asking how you could use Instax square film in these cameras. If you want to know more about how these cameras worked, I suggest you go watch the first two sections of my first video on how to use Instax mini film with these Kodak instant cameras. At the end of this video, I'm going to be going over some corrections I want to make for my first video, and I'm also going to be going over some modifications you can make to these slides, as well as the cameras, to produce more experimental photos, such as this one and this one. Until then, I'm just going to show you exactly how to make the square version of these Instax Kodak film slides, so that you can put them in, stick them in the cartridge, and then you are good to go. Alright, so for the most part, making this is going to be very similar to making the Instax mini version of these slides. You're going to need all the same stuff. Excuse me. In terms of tools, I recommend a cutting mat, and you're going to require scissors, an exacto knife or box cutter, a ruler, and although not required, it would be nice to have a light and a square. For materials, you'll need both scotch tape and masking tape, some glue, specifically a glue stick, some thin plastic, again, same stuff I had in the previous video, just got it off the cover of a notebook, some normal printer paper, and some cardstock. So like before, the first step is to cut out a square of paper that is the same size as the film that would have gone in the Kodak uh, cartridges. Since my last video, the size has not changed. It is still four inches by three and three quarters. All right, next step, get your plastic, and you're gonna wanna cut out a thin strip such as this. I already had this one cut out previously because I was uh, making larger batches of these. The specific dimensions of this strip are four inches by one quarter of an inch. And we're going to be choosing one of the longer edges to be the top side of the frame and attaching this to it. Like before, you attach it with tape. You want to cut off approximately one square of masking tape. You want to cover the strip with about a quarter of that square and then fold it over, doing this to both sides. Once you have this, trim off the excess. Again, a light behind it will allow you to see the exact edge of where you need to cut it. Alright, so so far this tutorial has been exactly like the Instax Mini, but here is where things change. The next step is to cut out the corners where you would slide the film into, but it's square this time. So the corners are going to be wider. Again, just eyeball approximately where the center of the frame is, and then make six marks for cutting out the slits. And it is here that I almost forgot to do a crucial step. It's to add tape to the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually been a while since I made one of these. Again, the purpose of this tape is to make the rollers able to grip the film just a little bit more easily. And like the tape for the um, spine of the slide, just trim off the excess. Okay, now we put in the slits. Again, the exact length of these slits 
Um, for me, what works best is half an inch. So when you're making your six marks, just eyeball approximately half an inch. Get your box cutter slash X-Acto blade and make the cuts. So now you should be able to take one of your Instax square pictures and slide it in nice and easy. Now then, next step, and really the last step, is to do the force reduction strips. Now, the force reduction strips, again, they're still the most important part, and for the square, they're not at all the same as on the mini version of these. I did try putting the same thickness of force reduction strips onto the square version, but the chemicals spread too thinly across. So the solution I found was for these force reduction strips, you have to make them half as wide as the force reduction strips on the minis. And you also have to add a different amount of scotch tape to them. So instead of a layer of cardstock, a layer of printer paper, and then covering it half with scotch tape. For the Instax square version of the force reduction strips, it's one layer of cardstock, one layer of printer paper, one full layer of scotch tape, and then half covered with scotch tape. So you're adding a little bit more thickness to the thinner um, force reduction strips. The dimensions of the strips that you need to cut out, half a centimeter, by eight centimeters. And again, like the Instax mini version of these film slides, you need to cut out four of them, two in cardstock, two in printer paper. There is our cardstock copies. And there is our printer paper copies. So now take your sacrificed um, Instax square piece of film, slide it in, and we're going to glue the cardstock version on first, and then the paper version on top of the cardstock ones. Again, if you want to know the reason for this specific design with the force reduction strips and the spine and the tape and whatnot, uh, you can watch the technical section of the first video, that is the final section of it, and that's where all of my kind of reasoning and trial and error is laid bare for the world to see. And again, when you're gluing on the cardstock, you want to not glue it right up next to the film, leaving about a millimeter of space. Okay, there you go. And again, just do that for both sides. Okay, and there we go. Like in the mini version of these film slides, the main point is to apply the force reduction strips so that they completely uh, run alongside the exposure area, that is the black area. So with those two glued on, you can remove the film from the slide and now we glue on the paper versions on top of the cardstock. And there you go. So that's a wrap on the glue. Now we're dealing with tape, scotch tape. So again, what you're going to want to do is fully cover them with one layer of scotch tape. Just get the edge of the scotch tape to run perfectly along the edge of the force reduction strip. And trim off any excess that you have at the bottom. And then trim off the excess on the edges.
Now is for the uh, more annoying scotch tape part. You have to cover half of the width of these with another layer of scotch tape. So get some new tape and then just eyeball the middle on one end and then what I do is I kind of I stretch it taut so that it's straight and then I eyeball the other end that usually gets the result that I want And there we go. And that is the completed Kodak Instax Square film slide. So now, the way you load it into the camera, uh, you have to go into complete darkness and then get out a piece of film from the Instax cartridge, um, kind of feel where the top is, and then slide it in here. Again, face down um, so that the back of it is facing out and then turn it around and slide the bottom corner into the bottom slit just like that and then from there get a cartridge slide it into the cartridge Kind of guide it by the sides like so and that is ready to shoot all you have to do now is put it in the camera and take the picture all right now it's time for the test shots one thing i would like to say about my camera is that uh, as i mentioned in the previous video it broke, and I ordered a second one of these, exact same model, Color Burst 250, but that also broke in the exact same way. One of the gears on the inside got stripped. So what I did is I actually drilled a hole in the side of the camera, and I added a knob that I 3D printed, and that just allows me to manually turn the gear train after I take the picture. So I'm just going to take a picture of these guitars for the test shot. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it looks. All right, there we go. So you can see chemicals spread pretty much perfectly. And we will take it out and wait for it to develop. Now one thing about the manual turning is that because I'm a human being I can't quite um, turn at a very consistent rate just with my fingers so this does have some slight banding going across in my opinion, once the photo is fully developed after a day or so, um, that banding is uh, not noticeable enough to really impact how good the picture looks. Now one thing I am noticing with this picture, just as it's developing, you can see up here in the corner, there is some whiteness. And that whiteness is caused by the chemicals not fully spreading to the corner. Now usually if you eject the photo and you see that the chemicals aren't 100% spread like over here it's also not fully spread to the corner that's usually okay because uh, there is a border around the picture that um, chemicals are still able to spread to and usually they will not be spread to so it doesn't impact the image itself although in this case it did so if you find that that also happens to yours what you can do is try removing a little bit of tape from this section of the force reduction strip. 
by removing that little bit of the tape, it'll allow the chemicals to properly spread over that section of the photo. And it is at about this point that my arm is getting really tired from holding this up, so I'm going to put it down. And um, here is a photo scan of the fully developed image. Now if you'll notice, the picture looks a little bit foggy around the edge, but I don't think that's a fault of the camera or the film slide or anything like that. I'm actually storing the Instax Square cartridge inside of a lunchbox face down in a room that's usually got the light turned off. However, I don't think it's a fully light-proof solution, so if it's just left there for a while and people are going in and out turning on the light, there will be a little bit of light leak which causes this fog effect. Alright, now it's time for the technical section of the video. In the first video, at 2 minutes and 48 seconds, I mentioned that Polaroid has a slightly different method for developing photos. At the time that I said this, I had zero experience handling Polaroid film, so I didn't realize that the developing method is exactly the same as uh, Kodak's. Which, you know, that makes sense because Polaroid did sue Kodak for stealing their process. Although Polaroid images are exposed in the front, the chemicals spread out in exactly the same way. You have the pods down here instead of just one pod that spread out chemicals over the back of it and it's just, it's the same. <laughs> So in theory, if Polaroid film did fit in these cartridges, you could use Polaroid film in these cameras. The only problem is that Polaroid film is a little bit too tall to fit inside of these. You can't even really see the entire exposure area because of these ridges at the top and bottom. However, because Polaroid and Kodak use the same process, you could make a modified version of these slides in order to use Instax film in a Polaroid camera. Another correction that I wanted to make is the use of aluminum tape to load multiple ones of these slides into a single cartridge. After I made that video, I found out that just loading in multiple ones of these slides without tape on them was about as reliable as the ones that did have tape on them. I also learned that after the ones that did have tape on them went through the camera a couple times, the tape deformed and they wouldn't come out cleanly, or sometimes they would come out in twos. So yeah, just don't put aluminum tape on the slides. <laughs> it's not worth it. All right, now it's time to talk about these two pictures. As you're probably able to tell, these two pictures are double exposures. The way you do this with a Kodak instant camera is you need to make a film slide that's basically just a piece of paper with the three slits cut out and also this notch cut out in the top right corner of it. The reason you need this small cutout in the paper is because there's a little arm that goes into this slot in the cartridge that pushes the film out. Once you take the first exposure of the double exposure, you can remove this, you can remove the film from this slide and put it into a standard slide, put this one into the cartridge, and then you can take the second exposure and extrude the picture. However, you might have noticed that these are not standard double exposures. They're half exposures. This one was taken with me on the right side, and then the camera was flipped upside down for the second exposure of the picture. For this one, it was two different flower pots, one empty and one full of flowers. Now the way that you get half exposures, or at least the way I did it, is I 3D printed this little piece, which fits perfectly in front of the lens on the camera. For one exposure, it'll be like this, and then I do the swap, and for the second exposure, I just flip it around like that. And that's how I'm able to get pictures like these. Okay, I think that concludes my video on Instax Square Film. Um, this is probably definitely going to be the final video that I make on this topic. Uh, so again, I don't blame you if you don't subscribe. If you have any questions about anything in this video that you want to ask, just leave a comment down below. I will be answering questions as often as I can. And yeah, that's about it. I will see you guys later.